Hey Savage Family, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you guys how I make achake, a West African dish that is so delicious. Stay tuned. The fish that I'm going to be using today is boss fish and I got this from the seashore. After I washed and cleaned it, I'm going to just start seasoning it. And to be honest, you guys, I only use the three ingredients in regards to the seasoning. I use salt, fish seasoning, and I added some cayenne pepper just for a little kick. And here, what I'm just going to do is just season both sides of the fish, the front and the back, because you guys know that we're going to eat the front and the back of the fish. And when it comes to fish or seafood per se, you don't have to put a lot of seasoning because you know that it does soak it up quite quickly so a little goes a long way and here i'm just going to open up the insides and make sure i get some seasoning in there as well and i'm going to repeat the same process with the other food the fish trying to get away and i'm going to do the same thing here as well So as you guys know here on my channel, I love to keep my meat seasoned and packaged overnight. So here I'm just going to simmer and wrap it and I'm going to keep it in the fridge and then it's going to be ready to cook tomorrow well seasoned and very moist. So it is the next day and my fish is ready to be cooked. Here is, well this is what my fish looks like. So I'm taking a foil pan and I'm going to use some olive oil nonstick cooking spray. I'm just going to spray the pan with this and I'm just going to add the fish to the pan. And yeah, no, I don't let nothing go to waste. So we had a little juice left in the bowl. I don't even know what I'm adding, but here I'm just going to scrape the remainder of the juices. Oh, there it is. And I'm just going to add it all over the fish. Next, what I'm going to do is take some aluminum foil. I'm just going to wrap it. I'm going to place this in the oven at 400 degrees for 30 minutes, flipping it halfway through. So this is what the fish looks like after baking it. I'm going to pop it back in the oven, broil each side for five minutes. And this is what the fish looks like after I broiled it. I had to zoom in for y'all so y'all can see that thing look real good, okay? So, as you may know, my favorite fruit is plantain. So here I let the plantain ripe to its fullest. And I'm just going to cut the ends off of it. And here I'm going to slice the middle. And then you're just going to peel it open. And you're going to cut them to your own desired size. I love plantains, you guys, and to be honest, if you don't like plantain, I can't trust you. So I'm just going to remove the skin here. Then I'm going to cut them to my desired size. So I like them not too big, not too small. And then I also cut them on a diagonal. Y'all know I'm extra, so I just want everything to look nice and pretty, even though when it go in my stomach, it don't matter. So after I finished cutting it, I just sprinkled a little um, Himalayan salt, I'm sorry, on it. So now I'm just going to add some oil to my pan. Not too much, not too little. Um, I would say this is about two cups of oil. You want to wait till it's hot. And then I started adding my plantain. Frying plantain is so easy, but you have to make sure that you watch it. Because I know y'all be seeing the little dog, the little black, black plantain. Yeah, we're not doing that. We do golden plantain over here. So here I'm just going to place everything in. And then I'm actually going to have one side fry for about five minutes, flip it over, and have the process be repeated. I also want to make sure that you take your time. I don't want you guys to, you know, burn yourself because this oil is hot. I done burned myself a few times, but at this point, I'm so used to it. Comment below if y'all know what I'm talking about when that hot grease pop on you, but you don't care because you're hungry. So now, look at it. You can just tell when it's time to flip it because it starts to look a little, a little brown. So here, I'm just going to begin to flip everything and look. Yes, that's how you know. Oh, Lord help my see, I'm getting hungry. Mm. Sorry, guys. 
So you just start flipping it. At this point, it's done. And I let the first side fry for five minutes. Then after I'm done flipping all of these, I'm gonna let this fry as well for another five minutes. Or actually, no, you don't let it fry for five minutes. You let it fry for about three minutes because I don't know, the other side just seems to fry quicker than the first side. So after the second side is fried, now you know that it, it is done to take out. So here, I'm just going to show you guys how good and golden it looks. And you can tell that it's so soft, but not too soft, like not too gooey, but it's just ripe. And then I'm just going to show you guys what the other ones look like. They look so good, you guys. Oh my gosh, I love me plantain. I think my middle name should be plantain girl. How are the plantain girl? <laughs> So now I'm just showing you guys what the last ones look like and it looks so good. So now for this stew, I'm going to use regular bell pepper, scotch bonnet, one tomato and one onion. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut everything and then I'm just going to place it in the blender. You don't want to have an exact size or to cut it too small because it's going to get chopped anyway. If you want to, teach your own, you feel me? But I'm just going to get it a nice bit size, throw it in a blender, and I'm going to show you guys what it looks like after. Unfortunately, the angle of my camera was not good here, but I just tried to cut everything into all well, the tomatoes into a nice size. And here I'm just gonna cut the tomatoes as well. But oh, tomato try to slip out of my hand. Uh -uh. Then I'm going to start peeling the onions, and then I'm going to cut them into. I'm going to chop them into a reasonable size, and I'm going to place them into the blender. A little tip you guys if you guys spray olive oil on your knife before you cut your onion it actually stops you from crying and here I'm just going to cut the top off and then I'm just going to continue the process and slice them and I'm going to put them into the blender You guys want to be careful. I'm used to it at this point, but I still want you guys to be careful. And this is what everything looks like chopped and everything blended. So I don't like when it's a lot of water in this, so I'm going to actually shift this. As you guys see, I just put this into a strainer and it sucked all the water out. Look at all the water at the bottom and then look at actual yeah so now i'm just gonna put this over um medium heat i'm just gonna add all the mixture the peppers and onions tomatoes and here i'm just going to mix everything around so it has like an even base in the pan now i'm just going to use well i'm going to add half a cup of oil i like to gradually add the oil because you don't want to put too much oil at the beginning so as you can see here i'm just going to mix everything together and gradually as i'm adding the mixture and the oil together you can see that the mixture is actually soaking up the oil so then that's where it comes in handy where later you'll gauge if you want to add some more oil then i'm dropping a chicken cube of maggi into there you have to break this maggi down if you guys y'all know what's up so here i'm just breaking everything down and i'm just going to mix everything thoroughly First, I'm going to add some black pepper, some garlic powder, 
some time. And some onion powder. So now I'm just gonna mix everything together just to make sure all of the seasonings is incorporating in the stew mixture. Mix everything around. And as I can see, I know that I'm gonna to have to add me some more oil. So here I'm gonna be able to gauge if I'm gonna add the other half of the oil. So here I just added a little drop and I'm just gonna mix everything around again. And I'm just gonna actually have this steam or boil for about five minutes until it gets like a little dry consistency. So you know that it's almost done. So here it basically dried up and I just have a few more minutes to go, but the stew is basically done. Now for the couscous, I added one and a half cup of water. Then I'm going to add a pinch of Himalayan salt for taste. And I let this come to a simmer and I let it boil for like five minutes. And after it's done boiling, I actually put this on low heat. I took half a bag of couscous and I just poured this into the mixture. And as you can see, I didn't put a lot yet because I love gauging. You never want to put too much. Always gradually start slow. So I mixed the couscous in the water. And as you can see, I'm able to add more. So I'm going to add more couscous and then I know it's right. So I leave it to steam for about two minutes. I kid you not, you guys. And it's literally done. Couscous is so easy. I use couscous. I know that they have the actual achake, but I like couscous because it's very light and it's a lot healthier. So here, as you guys can see, it's real fluffy, looking good. And everything is finished. And for my salad, I actually cut up some spinach, tomatoes, and some cucumbers, and everything's ready to go. Thank you guys so much for watching my video on Acheke. If you love this video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, as well as sharing this with your friends and family. I will see you guys next time. Stay blessed.